In this tutorial, I will show you how to make stylized water in Unity using shader graph. That means zero lines of code will be involved to make this effect. We're the Blackthorn Brothers. We've made a completely free course that will teach you all you need to create your very first game using Unity. So make sure to check that out using the link in the description. Inside of the Unity Hub, create a brand new 3D project and make sure to use the universal render pipeline. So I'll be working with this nice little island scene for the example of this video. The very first thing that we need to do is toggle on two settings. Go to Edit, Project Settings, and under Graphics, click on the Scriptable Render Pipeline settings that you have plugged in here. That will highlight the correct one in your project panel, then just select it and simply check Depth Texture and Opaque Texture on. Next, let's create our water, which is simply going to be a plane. So right click in the hierarchy and go to 3D object, plane. I'll rename this object to water. Then just scale it up as you need and place it correctly for your game. So wherever you want your water surface to be. Now at the moment, this does not look at all like water. And so to make it look and feel like water, we're going to create a special shader and a material that uses that shader. So I'm going to right click in my project panel and go to create. Shader Graph, URP, and choose Unlit Shader Graph, and let's call it Water Shader. Then I'm going to right click again, create a new material called Water Mats. Once that's done, I'll drag and drop my Water Shader onto my Water Material. And finally, I'll drag and drop the Water Material onto my Water Game Object. Of course, nothing has changed. We now need to double click onto our shader, which will open it up inside of Shader Graph, and we need to start making our Water Shader. So this panel works a little bit like the scene view. You can pan around by clicking and dragging the middle mouse button, and you can scale up and down by scrolling the mouse wheel. So the way shaders work in Shader Graph is that they are made out of nodes. A node is like a little block or tool that does one specific job, and you can connect them together to build your shader. Each node processes something and passes that information to the next one to create the look or effect you want. To add a node to our shader, you just need to hit the space key and that will bring up a window with all different nodes that you can add. The first effect that we want to give our water is to color it. But we don't want to just give it one simple color. Instead, we want to blend our water between two colors the shallow color and the deep color, depending on the depth underneath our water surface which is going to give our water a really cool look. The first thing we're going to do is come up here to the graph settings and make sure that surface type is set to transparent because of course our water is going to need some transparent properties. Let's create our first node. So I'll press space and search for the screen position node. This node simply gives the screen position of each point on our water surface. Make sure to set the modes to raw so that we get the exact unmodified 3D position data. Now let's add another node, and this one will be the split node. I'm now simply going to attach the output of the screen position nodes to the input of the split nodes. Like the name suggests, the split node is simply going to split whatever input we give it, in this case the position of our water points, into four different values. The R will represent the X position of each point, the G the Y position, the B the Z position, and now you might be wondering what the A value will be. The A value basically represents the depth from the camera to the water's surface, and that's exactly what we need. Note that you can move these nodes just by clicking on them and dragging them around to organize your shader graph however suits you best. Okay, now that we have the depth from the camera to the water surface, we now need the depth from the camera to the deepest part of our world underneath our water. To get that, I'll need to create a scene depth node. Let's make sure that sampling is set to I to get the depth from the deepest part of our world relative to our camera. All right, now that we have the depth to the deepest part of our world underneath the water, and we also have the depth to the water surface, we just need to subtract both of them together to get the depth of the water itself, or how far underwater you are compared to the deepest point in the world. To that, let's just add a subtract node, and let's subtract the scene depth with the water surface depth. We're also going to want to be able to control how deep our water is, so basically how much shallow water we want and how much deep water we want, 
So let's create a variable for our shader that we'll be able to control inside of the inspector to give various water effects. So I want to click here on the plus sign and create a float variable that I'll call water depth. And we can select the variable and give it a default value of 0.5, for example. Now we just need to drag and drop our water depth variable onto our shader graph. And to make it useful, we'll just create a multiply node and multiply our output of the subtraction with our variable. Finally, let's make sure that the depth value we get is contained between 0 and 1 to have a nice accurate percentage of how deep our water is. So I'll make a clamp node, attach the output of our multiplication to the input here and make sure it's set to 0 and 1. Okay, great. We now have our depth percentage. All we need to do now is apply the correct color depending on this percentage. So I'm going to create two new color variables. The first one will be called shallow color and the second one will be called deep color. Now I'm going to drag both of them in and let's add a lerp node. Lerp means linear interpolation. It takes in three values. We'll give it the shallow color has value A, the deep color has value B and our depth percentage as value T. This node will basically return a color between our shallow color and our deep color depending on what our water depth percentage is. That's exactly what we want. Okay, now we can simply drag the output of this lerp node to the base color of our main nodes. Now let's press on save asset up here and test this out. Let's choose for example a nice turquoise color for the shallow water and the deep blue for the deep water. And then you can play around with the water depth variable to control how much deep or shallow water you want. Okay, this is looking cool but it's missing some movements. Let's add some wave-like movement to our water. To make waves, we're just going to follow this simple math equation, which states that the height of a given point on our water surface, so the y value, should be equal to itself, so y, minus the amplitude of our waves multiplied by the sin function of the frequency of our waves multiplied by the x position of the water surface point minus a time parameter so that the waves form over time. Okay, so let's just take this math and convert it into nodes to get our wave effects. Let's start off by creating all the variables we need. The first one will be a float variable for the wave amplitude. Then the next will be a float for the wave frequency. And finally, we'll have one for our wave speeds. Let's start within the parentheses of the sin function. So we need the x position multiplied by our frequency. To get the x position, we'll create a position node and like last time, we'll also need to attach to it a split node so we can get the individual x, y, and z values of our water surface. Then let's drag in our frequency variable and let's multiply them together using a multiply node. Now we need to subtract our time parameter. So we're going to create a time node, which just counts down time. And we're going to drag and drop our wave speed variable and multiply those two parameters together to get our time parameter. And now we can simply use a subtract node and subtract this with our time parameter. Now let's just apply to this our sin function by creating a sin node and dragging this value as the input. Let's continue to follow our equation. We now need to multiply this with our water amplitude variable. So let's drag that variable in, create a multiply node and multiply those two together. Finally, we need to subtract the current y value. So I'll create a subtract node and subtract this with our y value of the position node back here, so g. And there we go. This now contains the correct y position of each point on our water surface to be able to create waves. We just need to combine this y position into a vector 3. So I'll make a combine node, put this into the g slot. We'll come back here and drag the r value of the position into the r of the combine. And the same with the b of the position node into the b of this combine node. r and b, which of course represents the x and z positions. Now that we have our vector 3, we could just plug the rgba into the position slot on our main node. Let's now save our asset and test this out. Pressing play, nothing will be moving and that's because we need to increase our wave variable values. Let's increase all three a little bit and you'll see that our water now has some movement going on. So increase wave amplitudes to increase the wave size or increase the movement of the water. 
You can increase wave frequency to change how often the waves appear. And finally, you can control the speed of the wave-like movement with the speed variable. So play around with these three values until you get the results you like. Let's add one final effect to complete our water shader, and that is to add some specular ripple sort of texture on our water. So back in Shader Graph, I'm going to create this weird Voronoi node, which basically generates this organic looking pattern that really works well with water. Now we want these water cells to move around. So let's make a float variable called specular speed. And now let's multiply our specular speed variable with a time node variable. And then we could just assign this value into the angle offset parameter of the Voronoi. If you now start to increase the value of our speed, you'll see that the cells begin to move around. Great. We can also control the cell density with this parameter. So let's make a new variable to control it. I'll call this float variable specular size. We'll drag it here and attach it to the cell density. Now to control the thickness of our cells, we can add a power node. Input the Voronoi and now with this second parameter, it will change how big our cells are. So let's make another float variable called specular thickness and input it right here. Now let's finally make a very last variable to control the color of our specular areas. So I'll make a color variable called specular color. Then let's drag it here and to use it, I'll just create a multiply node and multiply this power node with our color variable. Now to apply our specular effect, we'll just create a add node and add this specular effect with our lerp color effect. And now we can delete the connection between the lerp and our base color and instead input into the base color our lerp combined with our specular effect. Okay, let's press save asset and check out our final water. So just play around with all four of the specular variables to achieve different effects and also all the other variables. For my example here, I pretty much like these values. With this shader, you can also create lava, for example, just by switching the colors to reds and oranges. Lots of control here. Of course, this remains still a very basic and cartoony sort of water. There is no refraction, reflection, other more realistic and complex properties, but it's a great base that you can then expand on. Okay, that marks the end of this video. Don't forget to check out our completely free game dev course with the link in the description. And press like and subscribe if you enjoy these Unity tutorials. Alright, cheers!